In this video series, we've been looking at how to install and configure email software like Mailscape, Compass, Uniscope, and Foresight in three easy steps. This video is the third in the three-part series. Now in this third video, we will show step three or how to configure thresholds and exclusions plus the namespace features for Exchange 2013. And we're gonna do all of that quickly and easily. Let's go to our virtual machines. Here on the web server, we can see by looking at the OneLook dashboard that we still have a little fine tuning to do. We'll start with thresholds. Now notice that my domain controller looks fine. Let's look at my Exchange 2013 environment by clicking on functionality. Under resources, I can see that all my servers are flashing yellow, indicating that something is in the warning state. I click on one of my mailbox servers to see what it is, and though I see the page files a little high, it seems to be within the OK range to me. Let's go to the eNow admin console. Here in the admin console, we'll check the universal thresholds, or that which applies to all the servers, by navigating to Server Central, Monitoring Policy, and Resource Thresholds. As we look here, we can easily see what the problem is. I must have been doing some testing in this lab because it's set to trigger a warning state when page file usage exceeds 10%. Well, that's not realistic. Let's go ahead and punch another number in there, like uh, 90% for warning and 95% for critical. We will click Save. And by the time we go back to our One Look dashboard, click on Monitoring, and get back in there, we can see that that's all cleared up for us. So that problem has been solved. Now, back on the One Look dashboard, we still see red lights flashing critical under backups and services. We'll tackle these one at a time. Let's say that I'm aware of the backup and that I'm running multiple lagged copies of my DAG and uh, that's not a problem to me. So I'm going to set a universal exclusion for backup. To do that, we'll go back to the admin console. We'll make sure that server central monitoring policy is selected. And then we're gonna go to general monitoring exclusions. Now let me show you how easy this is. You don't have to type the things in here that you'd like to exclude. You just click select and we can see here our various backups. We're going to hit OK, click Save, and it's done. It's really that easy. So let's go back to our One Look dashboard, click Refresh, and you can see that that's cleared up as well. Just one more thing left, and we'll be done with this part of our video. So now we see that under Services, TSMBX01 is lighting red critical for the remote registry service. Now let's say that I don't want to run the remote registry service on that server. To set an exclusion for a specific server, we'll click on that server, in this case MBX01. We will click on services and this shows us that we are currently inheriting services from the universal policy. So to exclude a service just for this server, we'll click on monitor the following services. And then we'll go down here and find remote registry, remove it, click save, and that's finished. We go back to the One Look dashboard under functionality, it's all cleared up. 
So if we were working in a 2007 or 2010 environment, we would basically be done at this point. We installed Mailscape and Compass on the web server. We installed it on the main controllers and on the exchange servers. We configured the thresholds and the exclusions. So now all that's left to do is because this is an Exchange 2013 environment, we will configure the namespace features. And so basically what we're going to do is fix this so that it displays properly regarding the Exchange namespace. Okay, we're back on the web server now. And I'm going to go to the location where I downloaded the Mailscape installation package. We can see a few files here that I'm going to copy to the desktop. Let's take a look at these. Kind of put them up here in the black where we can see them better maybe. It's that blue background. So again, if we were configuring an Exchange 2007 or 2010 environment, we'd be done. This is for Exchange 2013 for the namespace features so that those will display properly. What we've got here is we've got the eNow namespace monitor setup. This is an exec file that we're going to run in just a couple of minutes. As we learned earlier, installing this file will guarantee that our new namespace features display properly. We have the Exchange namespaces XML file, and this is an XML file that we'll enter some information into and copy to a folder on the web server. And here we have Exchange 2013 namespace configuration. So this is a Word document that details the steps needed to configure this feature. And what we'll do now is the first thing, we will run the eNow namespace monitor setup. Right click and install. Welcome to the eNow namespace monitor setup wizard. Accept the agreement. Next. Okay, and this will run just for now under the administrator account. Okay, and it's completed. Now that that's completed, okay, we'll move on. And this tells us in the eNow admin console to navigate to server central, tuning policy, general, exchange, namespace settings. And what we're gonna do here is basically configure a domain username and password for the various tests that are being run. So let me enter these real quickly. And click Save. And that part's done. Now, as our last step here, we will go to the XML file on the desktop. Here we are at Exchange Namespaces. We'll go ahead and open this up with Notepad. And even though we have detailed instructions in the Word document, I'll sum it up for you. Basically, we need to get the correct URL to run the various tests. There's PowerShell commandlets that will give us all that information. In my case, they all come up the same because I'm running one CAS hub server. So let's look at the Exchange Management shell. You can see here that I have run the commandlet, get OWA virtual directory, and in my case, everything's pointing to tscshb one So as we go back to our XML file, that's what we will need to swap out for the server name, domain name. So first, my namespace name is toxic shot energy drinks that's good then instead of 
servername.domain.com, I need to put in the appropriate URL for my EAS, EWS, auto discover tests, what have you. So here we go. We're going to do edit, replace, and we're going to replace servername.domain.com with mine, which is tscas one toxicshotad replace all. And we'll just go through this line by line real quick and verify. OWA, correct, ECP, EWS, EAS. Everything looks good. We will save. Let's go back to the desktop. Close some of this out. And there it is. All looks good when we look at it in XML format. So now we're just basically going to take this XML file, copy it, and we're going to paste it in a folder here. So we're going to go to Program Files, E Now, Mailscape Web, Mailscape Data, Database, paste it in here. We will go to Services and restart the eNow namespace monitor service and go back to our OneLook dashboard. You can see that here under namespace it says toxic shot energy drinks. When we click on functionality it says the same thing toxic shot energy drinks exchange namespace. We see the CAS health listed. We see the DAG status. We can now drill into our DAG and see the network health and the active preference and the redundancy. Everything looks great. So a couple of minor configuration tweaks for the Exchange 2013 namespace didn't take long. So there we have a three-part video series we've just finished up. How to install and configure the eNow software. We installed it on the web server. We installed the client on the Exchange server and domain controllers. And we set up thresholds and exclusions and namespace features for Exchange 2013. There you have it once again, eNow Admin Life Simplified.